ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah wa khayru al-hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance is the guidance of our beloved mas- of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al-umuri muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours wa kull muhdathatin bid'ah and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation wa kull bid'atin dalala and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, with Ramadan coming and fast approaching only two months away, we need to get ready and prepare ourselves as the companions used to for the five months up to Ramadan. And there are certain issues, certain topics that we see always afflicting us on a daily basis. So we want to review those so that we can attend to at least the one we will mention today and get ready and purify ourselves before Ramadan comes. And that topic is Al-Ghadab, the issue of anger. And this is something that plagues every single human being. And it's a sermon that we could theoretically give daily. Not just every week, daily. As a reminder, each and every one of us, because Allah said, Remind one another because reminding one another benefits the believers. The anger, it sources shaitan without a doubt as we will see. And Allah commanded us, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُوْ فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوْ That shaitan is to you an open enemy. He's an avowed enemy. He's not trying to say he's your friend. He's clearly the enemy. And Allah said, treat him as an enemy. فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوْ Treat him as an enemy. And deal with him as if your enemy, he's your enemy in front of your face in this life. Allah says, وَلَا تَسْتَوِي الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةَ إِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ Allah says what means <clears throat> the good and the bad cannot be equal. Repel the evil, repel the bad with that which is good, with that which is better. As Allah ordained the believers to be patient with their everyday dealings with the people. Be patient at times of anger and to excuse those who treat you badly. Verily, between you and that person who there was enmity, there will become as though there was, that person will become as though they were a close friend. وَقَالَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَالْكَابِنِينَ الْغَيْضِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنَ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسَنِينَ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He told us the qualities of the muhsin, the qualities of the good doers. And listed in this ayah, are they, they are those who give in times of prosperity when they have the wealth. They are those who give in times of adversity when it's a time where they're fearing that poverty. It's on their doorstep. And those who repress anger, they hold it back. They don't let themselves be controlled by their anger. And they are those who pardon the people. They forgive, they let things go. They get past it. Allah says He loves them. He loves the people who do these things. So may Allah make us of them. Allah says, 
إنما الشديد الذي يملك نفسه عند الغضب رواه البخاري أن the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said the strong one is not the person who overcomes you by his strength it's not the one with the biggest muscles or the one who can lift the most weight or the one who's strongest when you're inside of a ring but the strong person is the one who can control themselves when they're in a fit of rage they feel themselves starting to boil but they know how to turn it down so they don't get into an evil spot ثم قال رسول الله عفوا ثم ذكر في الحديث قال رجل من نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم أوصني قال لا تغضب فردد مرارا قال لا تغضب رواه البخاري again in Sahih al-Bukhari we have a hadith where a man came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and said advise me counsel me and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم could have told him anything in the world and he chose one phrase لا تغضب do not become angry so the man repeated to say okay advise me again counsel me teach me and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم only kept repeating لا تغضب لا تغضب لا تغضب do not become angry, do not become angry, do not become angry. So we've been given the prescription. Just like when we're sick and we have a disease, we're given the prescription by our doctors or the pharmacists or whatever it may be to heal ourselves and cure ourselves. And in the Quran and the Sunnah, we have the best of prescriptions to deal with this anger that overcomes and destroys so many individuals, so many families and so many communities. So what should we do? The first and foremost to seek refuge with Allah from shaitan because he's the source of that anger, of that heat that's making your blood boil. So Naiman ibn Sard radiallahu anhu, he said, I was sitting with the Prophet ﷺ and two men, they were slandering each other. Until one of them got so angry, he got red in the face, you could see the veins in his neck starting to pop out. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, إِنِّي لَأَعْلَمُ كَلِمَةً لَوْ قَالَهَا لَذَهَبَ أَنْهُ مَا يَجِدْ لَوْ قَالَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ The Prophet ﷺ, he said, I know a word, I know a sentence. If you say it, it will cause you to relax and calm down. If only you would say, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Some people, you only hear this if they're going to recite Qur'an. Yet this phrase should be sought should be stay, stated and uttered many times in our days because this is a cure to control one's temper and one's anger. He said, if he said, I seek refuge with Allah from shaitan the outcast. So they said that to the furious man. Did you not hear what the Messenger of Allah is saying? And the man tried to say he was not mad, which is the common prescription, the common reaction. You tell someone when they're angry, say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. And it's almost like they don't want to. They cannot say it. And this person has some real work to do on their situation between them and their Lord, between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A'udhu billahi min shaitan al-rajim. That you seek refuge with Allah from shaitan and all his games, all his whispers, all his ploys, all the things he's trying to, to create to happen to you so that you destroy yourself. Keeping silent. And if this was something we could always do, you know, they have that. Keep your mouth shut. Don't say a word. Hold back. Restrain yourself. If you respond, if you repress your anger, the source of all that, what the Prophet ﷺ, he feared for us. And we'll give this khutbah as a reminder soon again about the tongue. Restrict that tongue. Because it is what can destroy everything else that comes after it. This is what the, the, all the joints of the body, when they wake up, they bow down to the tongue, saying, if you're good, we're good. If you're corrupt, we're corrupt. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليقل خيرا أو ليصمت. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said and he reminded us whoever believes in Allah on the last day should say what is good, say what is beneficial, say what is kind, say what will bring a benefit, or else zip your mouth. Don't speak the word. Hold back because what you say may lead to more and more of a grave or a worse situation for you and those involved. So the Prophet صلى he told us in the authentic hadith. In Sahih al-Jama'ah, if any of you becomes angry, فَلْيَسْكُتْ He should remain silent and he should not speak a word. Because it will only cause the blood to boil and more harm to be done and more evil to come about. Most people when they're angry, they say things that become sinful and they may not be able to take them back. They insult. Some say things to the level of kufr, to the level of disbelief, to the level of shirk because of their anger if they only but, uh, but knew. And we also see this anger leading so many men to throw talaq on their wives unjustly and unrightfully. 
uh, leading to a destroyed home. We see so many in those situations starting to backbite and slander and lie only because this anger has controlled them rather than them controlling their anger. Not moving, sitting down, lying down. This was a prescription from the best of mankind. You have in the Messenger of Allah وسلم, the best example for the one who believes in Allah and the last day and he remembers Allah much. What did he say? The Prophet he said in this authentic hadith in Sahih al Jami' and the Muslim Imam Ahmad, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if any of you becomes angry then, and he is standing, then let him sit down and his anger should go away. But if it does not go away, then let him lie down. If the anger doesn't go away, let him lie down. And Abu Dhar, he did this at a time when he got angry, angry and it worked. And many of us, we get out of control. We rage and we attack. You know when you're standing, you're more likely, more liable to do something to further worsen a situation. You're more likely because you're standing. So sit. Follow the prescription of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And if this doesn't work, then at least lay down so you do not do something harmful and crazy. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, a man once said, and this was in a narration in the Muslim of Imam Ahmad, I thought about what the Prophet ﷺ said about la taghdab, about not getting angry, and I realized that anger combines all kinds of evil. That anger combines all kinds of evil. And that anger can lead to all kinds of evil. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, la taghdab wa lakal jannah. The Prophet ﷺ in the authentic hadith, he said, do not become angry and jannah will be yours. This is how much that this bad characteristic can control your whole life, can control everything that will happen to you the later on in your life, in this life and in the next life. He said, لا تغضب ولك الجنة Do not become angry and paradise will be yours. And this hadith, Shaykh al-Albani, صححه, he authenticated and it's in Sahih al-Jama as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, تلك الجنة التي نورث من عبادنا من كان تقية Allah said in the Quran, such is the paradise, the prize that we're all looking for and striving for, that we should be looking for and striving for in this life. Jannah, such is the paradise that we should give as inheritance to those of our slaves who have taqwa, who are pious and righteous. That Jannah is already created, as is the hellfire that is raging like an inferno that none of us only, that we only know one seventieth a part of that heat of it. They're both in existence. But remember what Allah promised the muttaqeen. Remember what He promised those who were pious and those who were righteous, those who kept their duty to Allah, those who tried to follow the deen, those who repented when they sinned, those who controlled their anger. Remember that He promised a jannah for those who keep their duty to Him. So struggle with yourself to control your anger. And the big key, struggle with yourself to cut off any path that will cause or lead you to become angry. By remembering this reward, your anger, your anger inshallah, will be extin- extinguished. The Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever controls his anger at a time when he has the means to let it rip, to let it go, to act upon it, Allah will fill his heart with contentment, Yom Al-Qiyamah. This person will be filled with contentment, with pleasure, with ease on the Day of Resurrection. ثُمَّ قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم مَنْ قَذَمَ غَيْغًا وَهُوَ قَادِرٌ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يُنْفِذَهُ دَعَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ رَؤُوسِ الْأَخْلَاقِ الْخَلَائِقِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ حَتَّى يُخَيِّرُهُ فِي أَيِّ الْحُورِ شَاءَ The Prophet ﷺ, he said in this hadith, which is Hassan in the Sunnah of Ibn Majah, he said, whoever controls his anger at a time when he has the means to act upon it, then Allah will call him before all of the mankind on the day of resurrection. Allah will call this person in front of everyone he created on the day of resurrection and let him choose from the Hulul Ain, from the righteous maidens of paradise, whichever one he wishes. What is the reward for this? The reward for this is not on the battleground or anywhere else, it's for the one who has the means to inflict their anger, to let their anger go, to let it rip, to cause the harm from it but they control it and they do not act upon it. What a great reward for the one who does this sacrifice
for the pleasure of his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ibadullah, resisting anger is from the signs of righteousness, from the signs of taqwa, from the signs of the one who really truly keeps his duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah said, وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْدِ وَالْأَعَفِينَ عَنَ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ That Allah loves the muhsineen and from their characteristics is that they repress anger and they pardon and they forgive, forgive others. So here is something to follow and emulate the action of the muhsin, the good doer, that they have good character and they fear Allah. قال الله ولمن صبر وغفر إن ذلك لمن 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 عزم الأمور. And Allah subhanahu wa taala He says what means and verily whoever shows patience, whoever is forgiving and pardons the people, that would truly be from the things recommended by Allah. So anger, it's part of everyone's ways. It's part of everyone's quote-unquote nature. Of course, Allah created us. We don't believe in this mother nature and stuff like that. But it's from the ways of the humans that they get angry. And it rages from shaitan. And he adds fuel and fuel and fuel. And he's always looking to fuel that rage because we know it's the source of just more and more evil. As brothers and sisters in Islam, we need to listen to this rem- reminder and look for ways to implement it, make it your job every day. Just like you have a job that you may go work at, your job every day is how will I not get angry today? What doors will I close off so I do not get angry today? And if I fall into it, I will sit down if I'm standing. I will lay down if I'm standing here. I will seek refuge with Allah with a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim. And the likes of those matters. Once Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma, he reported that a man came to Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu, and he was upset with him. He said, O son of Al-Khattab, you are not giving me as much as you should be giving me, and you're not judging fairly between us. Umar radiallahu anhu, he became very angry with this man. And he went towards him, and he was about to strike him, to attack him. But Al-Hur ibn Qais radiallahu anhu, he was one of the ones present. present. He said, O Amir al muminin O leader of the believers, Allah said to his prophet, خُذ الْعَفْوِ وَأْمَرْ بِالْعُرْفِ وَأَعْرِدْ عَنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ He told Umar ibn al-Khattab رضي الله عنه And this was who? Umar ibn al-Khattab رضي الله عنه The second best in this ummah After Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه Umar ibn al-Khattab, the Khalifa In his time where he's the Khalifa The one who you saw following and implementing the sunnah of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم So strictly in his life Yet what? It shows that even the best of this ummah Had these challenges with anger, with getting upset so Hur ibn Qais, he told him this ayah, show forgiveness, enjoin what is good, and turn away from the foolish, do not punish them. Enjoin what is good, show forgiveness and turn away from the foolish. By Allah, Umar radiallahu anhu, after hearing the ayah, could not move any step further to do what he was about to do. And he was a man who was careful to adhere to the book of, the, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should seek to implement these actions, reminding one another, reminding one another, especially at times of rage, not adding fuel or giving things more to one another to make us enraged even further. This anger, we know it has bad effects on one's body, on one's heart, on one's soul, and of course on others. You may say harmful words, as we said. When you get angry, you may utter obscenities. You may use foul language. You may harm someone to the point of getting so angry that you may physically harm them or even kill them, and we've seen it happen. Social disasters result. Families are led to dysfunction and to divorce. And we see many people in these moments of rage and anger. There's not a period of time that goes by where we don't get a phone call of, my husband divorced me, but he was saying he was angry. And this is playing with a tricky wicket. This is playing with your deen. Because in the authentic hadith, which... um, uh, uh, you know, bringing it to mind now, there are three matters which serious is serious, and even if you're joking in it, it's serious. Divorce, uh, uh, marriage, divorce, and taking back the raja. So these are not aspects that we should play around with. And yet, so many people, they get to the point where they've said, I divorced you to my wife maybe 25, 30 times in their lifetime, and their excuse is always, I'm angry. Guess what? Your excuse is baloney and it doesn't count anymore. You've divorced that person, you're living in a state of zina at this point. All because of what? Because your anger is more stronger than your will to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your anger is stronger than your patience and your contentment with Allah and His decree. So we, be, we must be mindful of these things. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَإِن كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظًا الْقَلْبِ لَنْفَدُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكْ فَاعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says what it means. And by the mercy of Allah, you dealt with them kindly. Now he's talking to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and how he brought Islam and he brought Tawheed to the people. He dealt with them in a good manner and the kindness. But what did he say? Because there's a lesson for us in every relationship in this ayah. But if you were harsh-hearted with them, if you were mean, if you were angry, if you were not kind, if you were like this, they would have broken away from you. So pass over their faults. Show forgiveness to them from Allah, or give them, uh, يعني, ask forgiveness for them from Allah, and consult, with them, and consult them in their affairs. So who's most deserving of this than the family unit itself? Your husband, your wife, your parents, your children. Who's the most deserving of this type of lenience, this type of mercy, this type of kindness? مَا كَانَ الْرِفْقُ فِي شَيْءٍ لَا زَانُهُ As the Prophet ﷺ, he said, kindness is not a part of something except that it beautifies it and makes it better. Not this harshness and this anger. anger. And of course, everyone, no one is free from it and we must learn to control it. وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِنَّهُ مَنْ لَا يَرْحَمْ لَا يُرْحَمْ And the Prophet ﷺ said that indeed, the one who is not forgiving of others or merciful towards others, then Allah will not be forgiving or merciful to them. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we should be mindful of this, especially how this has attacked the relationship between the husband and the wife. Especially has this, this has attacked the relationship between the parents and the children. And now even so, we see it attacking يعني, the family unit at large and the communities to the point of not conversing with one another, backbiting and slandering one another, actually seeking to harm physically one another. And the source of all this is that anger. I will remind you with this before we يعني, take that first khutbah break. The Prophet ﷺ, he told us in an authentic hadith that every day, every day, Iblis, he sends out his soldiers to the people, to, to, to mankind. He sends out his soldiers, soldiers from the jinn to mankind. And they come back at the end of the day. I caused this person to, to, to steal. You've done nothing. I caused this person to commit zina. You've done nothing. I caused this person to take, uh, you know, to drink alcohol. You've done nothing. Then comes the one who says, I caused this husband and this wife to separate, to fight, to argue, maybe to divorce and the likes. He said, Ni'ma anta. He says, you are the one who's good. You are the one who's done good today. Out of all those other people who came to him, the police tells him you've done nothing until he gets to the one who has caused that havoc and that anger and that stuff in the home unit to the point where the husband and the wife, they, they break off or they fight so much that they separate. And he says, Ni'ma anta. And the hadith concludes that he even embraces that jinn. So just know, if you want to please Allah, control your anger. If you want to please Iblis, if you want to please Shaytan, go ahead. Get angry and you'll see your life spiral out of control. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, every single one of us, and I advise myself first, anger tries to creep up on them to the point that it devastates their lives. Look at some of the saying of the Salaf, our righteous predecessors in this Ummah. Abdullah ibn Mubarak, rahimahullah, he was asked, gather for us good manners in brief. And he said, keep away from anger. He could have said, keep your duty to your family, keep your duty to your neighbor, Many good things. Be kind, say please, say thank you, greet the people, smile. He said, keep control of your anger. Abdullah ibn Mubarak, rahimahullah, he would say, the world is a believer's prison. And the best action in prison is to be patient and control one's anger. The believer has no country in this worldly life. No country in this world. His land will be tomorrow in Dar al-Akhirah, in the afterlife. One of the Salafs, they had said, one of you might see his own faults but you'll still love yourself. But then you hate your Muslim brother on suspicion, meaning you get angry with them over something that they may do or say, and yet you, don't, uh, you get angry with them, but you don't get angry with your own self and your actions. So where is the logic? Ja'far ibn Muhammad, rahimahullah, he said, anger is the key to all evil. 
Abu Wa'il al-Qasi said, we entered upon Urwa bin Muhammad ibn Sa'adi, rahimahullah, and a man spoke to him and made him angry, so he stood up and he performed the wudu. And he returned from that and he said, my father told me on the authority of my grandfather, Atiyah, that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, inna al-ghadab min shaytan that anger, it is from shaytan. وَإِنَّ الشَّيْطَانِ خُلِقَ مِنَ النَّارِ And shaytan, he was created from fire. He was created from fire. وَإِنَّمَا تَفْعُ النَّارِ بِالْمَاءِ And you extinguish fire with water. فَإِذَا غَضَبَ أَحَدَكُمْ فَلْيَطْوَضَّ So he told them, so if one of you gets angry, this is another prescription. This is another medicine from the Prophet If one of you is getting angry, go make wudu. Splash that water on your face. Rub it in, wash your arms, do the actions of the wudu. Make a complete wudu. And you will find that it will help cool you down the idnillahi ta'ala. Abu Darda, he said, radiallahu anhu, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ma, ma shay'un athqalu fil mi, fil mi, fil mi, ma shay'un athqalu fi mizan al mu'min, yom al qiyama, min khulaq hasan. Wa inna allaha la yabghadu al fahish al badhi'. This hadith, which is sahih in the Sunnah of the Tirmidhi, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, there is nothing heavier on the believer's scales on the day of resurrection than good character. We know that anger and good character cannot coexist. They don't live, they don't even come. It's like water and oil. They'll never mix. So your anger must be controlled so that you have heavy scales on the day of resurrection. For indeed, Allah, the Most High, He's angered by the shameless person, the obscene person. And this is what happens to the one when they're in the state of that anger. Abu Umami he narrated that the Prophet ﷺ, he said, This hadith, which Shaykh al-Albani hasanahu, he created as hasan in the sunnah of Abi Dawood, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, I guarantee a house on the surroundings of paradise for a man who avoids quarreling and fighting and arguing, even if he's right. So you may see yourself in this stage where you're right and you don't argue. You might look at yourself as weak. But really with Allah, you're high. And Allah will guarantee a house on the surrounding portions of Jannah for the one who is right but avoids the argument and the quarrel. I guarantee a house for the person in the middle of Jannah who abandons lying even if it's for making a joke. Many of us do this and we know, يعني, it may be funny, but this is not from the way of the believer. And a house in the upper part of Jannah for the man or the woman who perfects their character, who has good character, who's kind, who's good to the people, who's always forgiving and being merciful and pardoning the people. And we'll end with this statement of Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, where he reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ما من جرعة أعظم أجرًا عند الله من جرعة غير تضمها عبد ابتغاء وجه الله. This hadith in Sunan of Ibn in the Sunan of Ibn Majah, which Sheikh Al-Bani he authenticated. ما من جرعة أعظم أجرًا عند الله. There is nothing swallowed with a greater reward from Allah than a servant. Than a servant who swallows his rage. Seeking by it the face and the countenance, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep this, this one, this last narration even in your mind. That there is not a servant who has a greater reward from Allah than the one he controls his anger and he swallows his pride and he keeps it back just because he wants Allah to be pleased with him. May Allah make us of those who can control their anger and be forgiving and merciful and pardoning of others. Allahumma khalil al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat wa al-Mu'minin wa al-Mu'minat wa al-Ahyat wa al-Amwat. Inna ka anta sami'an qareeb al-Mujib al-Da'wat. Ya muqallib al-Qulub, thabit al-Qulub al-Ala deenik. Subhana rabbika rabbil al-Izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-Mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.